I really wanted to pull in a new material that you don't see that often. I didn't really want to live in New Jersey at all, so when we broke up, I wasn't really sure what to do. It is intimidating cutting a big hole in the side of your van, but hi, my name is Deanna. Come take a tour. Welcome to my kitchen. To start off, I went with some micro cement. It's from a company called Smartcrete in Spain. They ship it over, it's fully DIY, it's already pre-mixed for you. It took about six days, but it's super simple, super user-friendly to apply and sand and all of that. I have my sink with a detachable faucet that has a sprayer, so that's super nice for washing dishes. Under my sink, mainly just my trash and my cleaning supplies. Up top here, I have all my utensils, forks, knives, spoons, spatulas, all the things that you need. And then I left some open shelving for right below that. That's where I store my plates and my bowls. And then down there at the bottom, I have cups and mugs. And then my main storage for all my um, cooking supplies is down below the oven. I have a huge pull-out drawer where I can store all my pots, pans, strainers, and such in there. In terms of cooking, I have an induction cooktop, a two burner, as well as a Breville Smart Oven Air Fryer Pro, so it does dehydrator, roaster, toaster, oven, all the things kind of in one, so it's super nice. I went with the Novacool fridge-freezer combo for a couple specific reasons. One, with just how narrow it is, it's the narrowest that you can find and it really fit in my layout. Two, because it has the fridge and the freezer, which is a must for me. I really love ice cream and acai bowls, so the freezer is a must. I can probably go about three weeks before I need to absolutely fill up, but um, so far I really love how it's working out. This space serves as my living room, my dining room table, my workspace. With this space, I have a table that's on a lagoon mount, so I'm able to move it around, raise it up, lower it down, which is really nice. Underneath my chair, I have a ton of storage that I can keep things, and then also down below the table is another pull-out drawer. Very small, but I'm able to keep all my work laptops and cords and stuff down there. And then also above me, I have more storage, again, covering it in that micro cement. As a girl, I really, really needed a mirror, and I kind of thought about it a little bit too late in my build, so I came up with this creative idea. I've got it on drawer slides, so when I'm standing up, I'm able to see myself, but I think it turned out really nice, and there's also a little latch so I can latch it closed so it doesn't fly while I'm driving. I bought my van used in Phoenix from a dealership. Funny story, I bought it literally the next day after I sold my bus. I flew here that night and went to pick up my van. I paid about 30,000 for it. It had about 38,000 miles on it. All in all, with the build and the cost of the van, I would say I'm about 55,000 in. I did the whole build all on my own, so I saved costs in terms of labor for the build, and it took me about four months to complete. I know for people that live on the road, it's always a debate if you should have a shower or not. I had one in my bus. It was an absolute must for this build as well. And so I have a shower. It's small, but it's um, two feet by two feet. And on the inside, I decided to go with the micro cement finish as well as some stone tiles for the floor. And then to finish it off, I have a Nautilus door that's really nice because it doesn't take up much space. It's self-cleaning, it folds up into itself. For my water capacity, I have 33 gallons and then I also have a 12 volt hot water heater that holds about 2.5 gallons. So that's perfect for taking a shower. I have a ton of clothes, so I wanted to find a way to kind of maximize my clothes storage. So underneath my bed, just kind of the first part of my garage space, I was able to make a little bit of hanging storage so I can have all my clothes that would typically be stored on a hanger. Welcome to my bedroom. For my mattress, it's a foam full-size mattress. I didn't need to cut it down or anything. Perfect size for Honcho and I to snuggle up. I installed all the windows in here on my own. Felt like it was super important just to be able to get ventilation, sleeping at night, and just some airflow. It is intimidating cutting a big hole in the side of your van, but 
It's super easy. They send you all the instructions and all the materials, so it's super user-friendly, no matter which company you really go with these days. Above, I also have some more upper storage. That's my main clothes storage up there. That's also covered in that micro cement with the walnut cabinet faces. It's super important for me and for anyone living on the road to make sure that you're super comfortable in your bed. We spend lots of days adventuring outside or long travel days and there's nothing like curling up in your bed and feeling super comfortable and kind of settling in for the night. So that's my tip if you're traveling on the road or you're thinking about doing a build, make sure your bed is super comfortable. Growing up, I was always super active um, in lots of sports. I played college soccer at the Division I level, so I've always been into being active. My mom really raised me to be independent, uh, believe in myself, and that I can really do anything that I put my mind to, which I think really helped me be confident enough to take that leap getting into uh, van life and building out a van. But my story, just to get on the road, Honestly, I was living in New Jersey with a boyfriend, an ex-boyfriend at the time, and we were living together. I moved there for his job. I didn't really want to live in New Jersey at all, and so when we broke up, I wasn't really sure what to do. And I came across a TikTok of a solo female traveling uh, in a small bus with her dog, and I saw it and fell in love with the idea. And that's kind of how all of this living on the road and traveling came about. For power, I went with all Renogy components aside from my batteries. One thing I love about Renogy is I'm able to monitor my whole system through an app on my phone, so that's really helpful. In my van, I have 600 amp hours of lithium battery. I also have a 3000 watt inverter charger. So with that, I'm also able to plug into shore power to charge my batteries. A couple other ways that I can charge my batteries as well is I have 400 watts of solar on the roof as well as a DC to DC charger so I can charge while I drive. Having a garage space is an absolute must. I store so many things down here, including my 33 gallon, water tank, my water heater and pump, all that's back here, as well as all my electrical components on this side. And then I built some shelves to kind of maximize the space back here so I can store all my extra shoes, my tools, uh, tents, anything like that that I need on the road. Just some words of encouragement or words of wisdom for people thinking about getting into this lifestyle, I say, totally go for it. It's been life-changing for me. I think it's an experience everyone should really have. Um, it can be scary. There's a lot of concerns that people might have. Uh, safety is always a big one, especially if you're a solo female. Um, but my biggest advice for that is just trust your gut. If you're feeling uneasy in a place, the amazing thing about living in a rig is you can just turn your van on or your vehicle on and drive away. So listening to your gut is always super important. Having Honcho here also doesn't hurt. So those are kind of my words of encouragement. Just go for it. It's an amazing experience that I don't think you'll regret. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to follow my journey, it's the.schoolie.teacher on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube.